of the most important responsibilities of a business leader is to identify which projects to pursue and which investment opportunities to forego. My name is Mike Falkender. I'm a finance professor at the University of Maryland's Robert H. Smith School of Business. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to evaluate investment opportunities. Before we proceed, let's talk about the sequence of events that takes place when firms make an investment. After they first identify the potential investment opportunities, they next need to raise capital. After raising capital, they make the investment into the project. The fourth step is to then manage the process of the project, manage the operations, and then finally, the cash flows are realized. The challenge is that there's a significant amount of time that elapses between when the capital is raised and when the proceeds are returned to the investors. What rate of return do investors need to earn over that time period, and how do we equate those final outcomes to the amount of money that's being invested at the beginning? So the inherent question that we struggle with in finance is, what is some amount of money in the future worth today? So for example, if a project generated $10,000 three years from now, what value would we place on it today? That's a question most people haven't thought about, so instead let's do an example that is more in line with people's personal investing. What if I start with $10,000 today and I'm gonna make an investment for the next three years? Well, one potential investment is to place the $10,000 in a bank account. And let's say that bank account pays 3%. So right now we have $10,000 in the account. One year from now, that 10,000 will grow to 10,300 because we'll have our principal 10,000, but then we'll also earn 3% on the 10,000 over that one year time period. Then from year one to year two, the 10,300 will earn 3%. So you'll get your 10,300 at the end of two years, plus 3% on that 10,300, you would have 10,609. Similarly, another year will elapse and that 10,609 will become $10,927. So how do we relate the original $10,000 to the 10,927? Well, we multiply it by one plus the rate of interest raised to the number of time periods that have elapsed. And this is the general formula for relating present amounts with future amounts or future amounts back to present. And then it's just an algebraic expression to demonstrate that if we think about that $10,000 in the future, its present value is equal to that future amount divided by one plus the interest rate raised to the number of periods. So let's do an example. Assume that your organization had identified an investment opportunity that would generate $300,000 at time one, $500,000 two years from now, and $200,000 three years from now. If instead of doing the project, your investors could earn 12% somewhere else, what's the most that it makes sense to spend today on that investment if you're gonna generate value for your investors? Well, because those are future cash flows, we need to equate them into present value. And that same expression that we just generated from the savings account is how we're gonna think about evaluating these cash flows inside your firm. So let's work through the cash flows one by one. Let's start with the $300,000 a year from now. Because it's still one year away and your investors are foregoing 12% between now and a year from now, we wanna reduce that $300,000 by the 12%. So if we take the $300,000 and we divide it by one plus 12%, the present value of $300,000 is just under $268,000. So if we were only going to realize $300,000 a year from now, the most that we should be willing to spend today is just under 268,000. But this project will also generate a benefit in time two and it's expected to be $500,000. What's $500,000 at time two worth to somebody today? Well, between now and two years from now, there will be two periods of 12% rates of return that are lost 
if you do this project. And so we've got to equate that $500,000 in year two to a present value recognizing the 12% cost of capital, the 12% interest rate that wasn't earned. So we're gonna take that $500,000 and we're gonna reduce it by 12% for the two years that are going to elapse. Taking $500,000, dividing it by one plus 12% to the power two means that it's worth $398,000 today. And then remember, you're also gonna realize the time three cash flow of $200,000. Since it's three periods away, we have to account for three years of 12% interest. So take that $200,000, reduce it by the 12% interest for three years, it has a present value of $142,000. Since this investment opportunity will generate all three cash flows, add up those three present values, and you see that the most you'd be willing to spend is $808,810. Those three cash flows, 300,000, 500,000, and 200,000, that total a million dollars, we would say that they are valued today at $808,810. So what if you were able to do this investment for only $700,000? Remember, your investors place a value on this investment of $808,000 because in order to do this investment, they place a value concurrent with a 12% rate of return. But you're not, it's not costing you $808,000 to do this investment. You can do it for only $700,000. The difference between the value that your investors place on those cash flows and the actual cost that you would incur from capturing that project, that $108,000 difference is what we call the net present value. And as long as that number is positive, then what it means is that even after you've compensated your investors for that time elapse, you've still made them wealthier by the amount of that difference. And so to the extent that you can identify the future cash flows, calculating the net present value of your investment opportunity is the mechanism by which you can justify investing your shareholders' money.